Hey guys, this is Mikhail from Lifestyle Asia and we are finally here to answer all your queries in watchmaking, in watch buying and collecting of watches. We are joined today by Rain Verde, the CEO of Rose the Watch Bar and he's going to be our expert this today to answer all our questions. Hello everybody, looking forward to answering your questions Mikhail. For someone looking to start into luxury watchmaking today, you know, what are the best brands that you would like to point out towards to get started with? So, wherever I actually keep a watch uh, brand in the store, it's only when I really like it. So it's I'm very biased towards the brand before I decide to keep it. Okay. So I always have put it first in my collection, enjoyed the brand, mm -hmm. and then I have brought it into the store. Okay. So as of now, my favorites are Bulgari, Chopard, Yuan, Bacchus and Strauss, Arnold and Sol, okay. and Jacob. What are the factors you think that men and women should really look forward to when picking up a watch today? So it's different for men and different for women. For men, it's always about the complications. I mean, today, let's face it, when we're buying watches and building a collection, we want uh, different complications and we choose it from which brand makes the best in that complication yes. and category. And for women, we always love to adorn jewelry, so it should always have a jewelry tonality to the watch. If we think about millennial luxury today, what do you think is an ideal price point that someone should start with or aim towards? Well, it's always about the pocket, that you, you what you want to spend and your passion for the collection of watches. If you're starting for the first time into buying something, I think a budget of two, three to five lakhs would be a good starting point. Um, if you could quickly tell us what are the biggest do's and don'ts that some that people very frivolously make uh, when picking up or buying watches today. So what happens is that very often people just go for the brand or they go for the complication. What I like to do is when I suggest watches to the client or anyone in my team is suggesting watch to the client, I make them buy watches that the brand is known for. Okay. So if, for example, someone has to buy a chronograph, I would make sure that he buys a brand that has got one of the most fantastic chronograph movements. For someone looking to aim for a very high-end model, someone looking to create a normality that will last them for years, you know, for like be it a Hublot or be it a Jacob company, what are the factors? What is the approach they should have towards that? So when they're buying high complications, I've, I've found that the grand masters in watchmaking, they generally have their own independent brands. And there I, I'm more biased towards going into independence than to going with a brand that is already in the past. So for me, a Jacob & Company is a strong one. Or a uh, uh, Tourbillon from, uh, uh, let's say, Christophe Claret. Uh -huh. or his blackjack watch okay. or things like that would really really be intriguing because those are complications that normal luxury watch brands would not venture into okay. and therefore they would be very limited pieces and there would always be an appreciation for that. 